Greeted by Zalwane in the mighty name of Jesus. I greet the leadership, I greet the elders, and I greet Abba Azalwane as a whole. Amen. Today we're going to be talking about power to be witnesses. Amantla Okfagaza. Can we go to the book of Acts, chapter 6, chapter 1, verses 6 to 8? The book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. It says, Then they gathered around him and asked, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times. It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen, Bazalwani. Amen. this is the word that he has laid in my heart this morning. Ugoti, we have been called to be witnesses. Hallelujah. This is a season, the church has entered into a season of witnessing, of more aggressive and more intentional witnessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are the last words of our king when he was here on earth after a resurrection. His last message is, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. So much, it's interesting to observe the disciples. When the disciples were with Jesus, and he was about to ascend into the heavens. This was 40 days after Jesus had resurrected and he was revealing himself after his resurrection. So now the disciples who were gathered around him were asking him, Muguti, so is Lord, is it now this time that you are going to restore the kingdom of Israel? If you remember, Israel at this point was under the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire had invaded Jerusalem and they were in charge of the nation of Israel. So they were in bondage, they were in slavery basically. So now the disciples were asking a very valid question. Because even the prophets had spoken about the restoration of the nation of Israel. It was prophesied in the Bible that Israel will once again become a nation. So their question is valid. It is a promise of God. Umoti, Israel, the kingdom of Israel will be restored. The earthly kingdom of Israel will be restored. So Bazalone, what I picked up here is that the disciples, in as much as they knew the kingdom of God, in as much as Jesus had spent time teaching them and actually explaining to them in parables and in simple teaching what the kingdom of God was, they still did not quite get it. After all the time they spent with Jesus, they still didn't, not, didn't understand fully what the kingdom of God was about. That is why at this point, before Jesus ascends to heaven, they innocently ask, is it now the time that you are going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And they were preoccupied with temporal things. Because earthly kingdoms are temporal. Yes. History will tell you that kingdoms and empires, they come and they go. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So now, they were looking for liberation from the Roman Empire. Yeah. 
because it was oppressive. They were looking for the restoration of the former glory of Israel. Because Israel was once a great nation under the leadership of Abu King David and King Solomon. Yeah. So they misunderstood the heart of God concerning the kingdom. Yeah. So Ujes, when he responds to them, he says, it is not for you to know, ta to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. Yeah. Amen. Nati Bazalwane as the modern day church, as we sit here, we are sitting with the promises of God. There are promises that God has given us that will be fulfilled here on this earth. Those promises are to be fulfilled here on this earth. But most of the time when God promises, he doesn't reveal the timing. A lot of times when God promises, you never know when he is speaking for now or in five years or in 20 years. Because Mungulungulu is the Alpha and the Omega. There is no time with him. He declares the end from the beginning. So what they are the disciples are in a delay are in a dilemma here. The prophets about Jeremiah and about Isaiah have spoken about the restoration of this kingdom. Yeah. And they have seen the Messiah, King Jesus. Yeah. And they recognized him, Guti, this is the Messiah. Yeah. So after the Messiah died and resurrected, it was natural for them to expect, Guti, everything will culminate into the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Bazalwane, there are promises that God has given us yeah. that we are holding on to. They are not carnal prom promises. They are biblical promises. Yeah. But, it's a timing and priority. Hallelujah. Yeah. How many of you know, Uwuti, no matter what God promises you, it can never supersede the mandate of God upon your life. Hallelujah. The promises of God concerning your life here on earth can never supersede God's calling and assignment upon your life. Hallelujah. So when Ujesu is, 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 re is responding to them, it is not for you to know the times. Yeah. He is actually shifting their mind. Yes, yes you have a promise, but yeah. the correct approach is to receive promises and still focus on the mandate. Hallelujah. Yes. The kingdom of God concerns the rulership of Christ and the reign of Christ here on earth and in eternity. The kingdom of God is not about individual comfort, promises and conveniences. Hallelujah. It is about the fulfillment of the mandate and the work of God. Even though Matthew, the, oh Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 is very popular, but seek ye first the kingdom yeah. and his right. In spite of the promises you carry from the Father, yeah. seek first yeah. the kingdom of God. Yeah. The promises can never be the focus. Yeah. In spite of the promises, yeah. in spite of the prophecies, seek first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. And his righteousness. God's kingdom as alone comes before our personal ambitions yeah. and our personal needs. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And there are those promises, like I said, Ungulungulu gave us promises for things on earth which are temporal. Yeah. So he's asking us today to keep things in perspective. Yeah. Yes, I've made those promises to you, but don't lose focus. Yeah. There is a mandate. Yeah. There is a mandate bigger than the promise. Because you, you know what happens when you shift yeah. your focus from the assignment to the promise? Yeah. You get frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. 
Because God is supreme and He is sovereign, He does things at His own time. Yes. You cannot manipulate God into doing things your way, with your time. You, you, we can't throw tantrums at God and He moves. So focusing on the promise, let's believe God for the promises. Let us embrace the promises, but let us focus on the assignment. Is a taller than the promise. Now the prosperity is a taller while we are running, fulfilling the great mandate. In the book of Isaiah, chapter eleven, verse twelve. Oh, prophet Isaiah is prophesying about. I'm just referring this to highlight what he. About the disciples were not of the mark. This was in the word. The prophet Isaiah says he will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the banished of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. This is a promise from God. And Bazalane, if you follow history and prophecy, you will know that this prophecy, this prophecy was fulfilled in 1948 when Israel became a nation again, hallelujah. Yeah. So imagine how much earlier yeah. the disciples had anticipated Wuti, boom, the nation of Israel will be restored. Ungulungulu lento uzu itualisa in 1948, when was Jeremiah and Isaiah alive? Do you see the sovereignty of God and the danger of focusing too much on the promise instead of the assignment? Because there are things that God spoke in generations past that He's only fulfilling now. There are things God is speaking today, but they will be fulfilled maybe in the next generation if the Lord tarries. Hallelujah. So, Bazalwane. This morning, let us shift our focus. Let us readjust our focus from the promise to the assignment, to the mandate. Hallelujah. So, Bazalwane, the times and seasons are safely in God's authority. When Jesus is answering the disciples, he says, it is not for you to know the dates and the times whom the Father set in His authority. Hallelujah. Basalwane, Ungulungulu is so sovereign. He already has a plan. He has a plan. He knows, even for your personal life, He has a schedule. He knows, Uguti, 2022, this and this and this will happen to you. 2023, this and this will happen to you. So we need to trust in the authority of the Father. Yeah. No, let us continue praying for the fulfillment of our promises because we know we have an enemy who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So we will continue praying for the promises, but our focus will be on the assignment. So that we don't frustrate ourselves because as soon as you start focusing on the promises, Focusing on the benefits, focusing on what will benefit you, you become self-centered. It becomes about you. Whereas Ujesu says, "Take up your cross and follow me. Whoever will follow me must deny himself, deny your ambitions, deny your personal desires, deny your plans, and follow Jesus." Hallelujah. The security, Bazalwane, of times and seasons resting in God's hands, we can see it in the book of Psalms 31, verse 15. Udafite was going through a very difficult time when he wrote the Psalms. The 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 Psalm. Uti, my times are in your hands. Deliver me from those who pursue me. He first starts in verse 14, and he says. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. Basically, yes. my times are in your hands. Yes. Deliver me from those who pursue me. 
Even this morning, our times are in God's hands. Our files are in God's hands. God knows exactly what should happen, when it should happen, and how it should happen. We therefore should be free from anxiety and worry and impatience because we serve a sovereign God who has authority to set times and dates and seasons. So, Bazalwane, our outlook in life as believers should shift. We embrace the, the, the promises of the Father, but our focus is on the assignment. Hallelujah. One of my favorite verses is in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 11. Just the, the first part of it. He, it says, he has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. God makes things beautiful and appropriate in their time. So I think, Tina, because we are on earth, sometimes we get anxious when we see our peers ahead of us. We get anxious when we see people receiving their promises now and Tina, we're still waiting. But the Bible says, the story, you, the story of your life, Ungulungul yeah. will make everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. So, Bazalwane, for the children of God who are devoted to Him, the Father will not fail us. God will not fail us. There is a Zulu saying, Eti Ungulungul agawaja manjumundu. You cannot walk faithfully and seek the kingdom diligently and then God does not add. God will add because that uh, verse in the book of Matthew chapter 6, 33, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Seek unto Ulukulu who adds to us as we seek his kingdom. Hallelujah. So don't panic about the events in your life. Yes. Your times and your seasons and your dates are safe in the Father's hands. Yes. He knows. Even when people are questioning you, Wuti, when is this going to happen for you? Yes. Your times oh and seasons and dates are safe in the Father's hands. Yes. Don't even allow yourself to get anxious or to panic about anything. Hallelujah. And we are secure in his hands. I think sometimes as well, we forget how superior our God is. We forget how sovereign he is. We forget that he's high and lifted up. He sits in high and holy places. He is the lofty one. And his plans cannot be thwarted. Yes. No one can go against the hand of God and succeed by the one. So we are safe trusting him with our times and seasons. Hallelujah. Let us rest in the Father. Hallelujah. He then says, after telling them, it is not your place to know the dates and the times and the seasons that the father has set in his authority he then says but you will receive power this is what is yours you will receive power power after the holy spirit comes upon you our walk with the lord our walk with god Bazalwane, is not dependent on our strength the fulfillment of our assignments, the fulfillment of our callings has nothing to do with our abilities. It has nothing to do with our family backgrounds. It has everything to do with the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. He says you will receive power, meaning you will receive ability capacity, strength, you will be empowered, you will be equipped, you will be prepared, you will be qualified, you will be made competent to be witnesses. Hallelujah. 
It is in the kingdom of the Father, it is the total opposite. Here on earth, when you're looking for a job, you have to show up knowing your story. You have to show up with qualifications. You have to show up competent. You even have to pass their psychometric tests and assessments. Not so in the kingdom of, father, of the Father. He says, Moses, come with your stuttering and I will qualify you. I will use you with your human limitations. I will use you with your ignorance. I will use you with your family background. In the kingdom, it is God. We come as we are. And then he qualifies us. And then he makes us competent. Competent. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5. It says, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. I also like it in the New Living Translation. It says, we know we are not able in ourselves to do any of this work. God makes us able to do these things. Our competence comes from God. It is God who qualifies us to do things. It is God who equips us and who empowers us. So none of us have an excuse. I pay my excuses. I know my personality. I pay No more excuses. Why can't we run for God? Because when we stand before him one day, and our works are brought before him. No one will have a chance to say, Father, I didn't do this because I was too shy. I, was, I didn't have the confidence. I felt inadequate. Because yeah. the Father will say, I never asked you to be adequate. I never asked you to come with your abilities. It was up to me to endow you with power that will qualify you, that will make you competent. It, is, it was always up to me to give you the ability to do what I told you to do. So Moses must come stuttering. Come with your limitations. Come with your short, shortcomings. Come with your not so great English. Come. It is the Father who qualifies you, who makes you competent. Bless the Lord. Yes. I'm not saying because I understand you, which is sometimes there are real anxieties that people face. This is not a denial of your limitations. Yeah. We all have limitations yeah. and we acknowledge that we have them. Yeah. But here yeah, we must leap and go towards him yeah. who will make us competent, who will make us sure fitted as dears yeah. in, and enable us to climb the mountains. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then he says, you will be my witnesses. You will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes and you will be my witnesses. It's a pity that this phrase, witness, has been hijacked. But we are the Jesus witnesses. Hallelujah. Eternal fathers. Yes. We are the witnesses. Hallelujah. We bear testimony about who the Lord Jesus is. We bear testimony because when he says he will give us power, not only will he give us power to talk, but he will give us power to perform miracles and say to the dead, rise up in the name of Jesus. He will give us power to present evidence of his supremacy as God. Hallelujah. So, Bazalone, we are the witnesses and we are the ones called to testify. He then says, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. Yeah. The first three places he mentions are the places where they are guaranteed to be persecuted. Yeah. Jesus had been crucified in Jerusalem. Yeah. In Judea, they had rejected him. In Samaria, they asked him to leave. Yeah. Yet when he, is, he leaves, 
before he ascends, he says, you will first start where you were rejected. You will start where you will be persecuted. You will start la nisabakon. You will start where they crucified me. And you will build my witnesses at your place of persecution. But the persecution should never, the possibility of persecution and rejection should never stop us from witnessing. Whether you are being mocked by your family members, friends, at work, in your neighborhood, let them call you a lunatic. Let them call you a fool. Let them call you ignorant. But the power is upon you to be a witness. Hallelujah. Opposition was guaranteed in these places where Jesus says, first in Jerusalem. They were bound to meet persecution. But God says, don't let that deter you. Where they undermined you, where they thought you are crazy, that is where you will start being my witness. So, even in our case, Let's start in our families. Yeah. Do your cousins, your aunts and uncles, do they know that Jesus is Lord? Yeah. Because sometimes we want to jump the gun. We want to, we want to announce the gospel in big platforms, but we haven't started in the house. Do your parents know that Jesus is Lord? Are you a witness in your immediate environment? Do your colleagues know? Yeah. Do your business partners know? Do have you witnessed in your immediate environment? Because this, when Jesus says starting in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, that was their immediate environment. Yeah. Are your uncles and aunts going to heaven? Are your nieces and nephews going? Are your parents, have you told them? Because you know why sometimes we don't witness to people who are close to us? Because we know that they know us. They know us for who we are. So being a witness will also elevate your behavior. You will start walking because your life will have to be a witness before you speak. Close family members like parents and aunts, you can't preach at them. They must first feel your, see your changed behavior. What a beautiful papa to whatever happened to him is really working. That is why we are afraid to witness to our families because we know what we have two personalities a personality for church and a personality for home. When we ask people at home, how is she? They will tell a different story. So, Bazalone, such things, let us repent on, on such things. Let us repent of such things. Holy Spirit, help us where we fail. In terms of living a life of a faithful witness, help us. Even at work, what do people say? about you are you just a horrible monster that is why you can't witness because now we are Zaz yeah. so Bazalwana, let us ask the Holy Spirit to help us that is why we need power it is not just for performing miracles and speaking it is also the power to walk right the power to live right before people People who don't necessarily like us. The power to do things right, to speak like Christ. So, Bazalone, let us embrace a singer before Ungulungulu opens doors and give us platforms, international platforms. Let us start in our immediate environment. Um, I won't say by name, but we recently buried, not recently, sometime last year, we buried a family members of a family member of ours. Yeah. And as every speaker was speaking, we were busy 
the square bar, I said, who are they talking about? <laughs> we did not recognize this loving, generous guy they were talking about. We, were, we, 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 we sat there thinking, I will. This person didn't even speak to us. Mm -hmm. This person couldn't even bring himself to interact with us. Mm -hmm. he, he would, if he saw anyone, he would just turn and any family member, he did this to even, even to his mother, he would just turn and walk away. So when, on the day of the funeral, <laughs> we were so shocked. Who are they talking about? Like, why is Bazalwane asking about Dumangute? Oh, Dumil, I'm sorry if there's someone's actual name. <laughs> but sometimes we are famous. Lebute, far away. Our immediate environment does not bear witness to what we are. We are hypocrites. We honor outsiders more than we honor people that are in our lives. That is why witnessing to people that are in our lives is hard. Because when we step outside, we know how to behave in honor. We know how to clean it up and be honorable. Whereas the people in our immediate environment, I remember we kept on saying, hmm, hmm. <laughs> They were even saying, Muti, families came forward, he had brought groceries for this family. Um, when there is a need, he was the first to call his friend, Muti, hey, that house, they seem needy. His mom didn't even know a loaf of bread from him. Not even a loaf of bread. Here at home, no one even knows each Yak. So, Bazalwane, let us guard against such things that creep in. They creep in unaware. Suddenly, you are nicer at church than you are in your own family. They creep in unaware. Let us guard against such things so that we will be able to be witnesses in our Jerusalem, in our Judea, in our Samaria. And as soon as we are faithful with being witnesses in our Jerusalem, in our families, in our immediate environment, God will entrust us with big platforms in far away places in the ends of the earth. So, Mazalwane, I pray in this season of witnessing, because that is what the Holy Spirit says to me, Wuti, we, you've entered a season of more aggressive yeah. and intentional witnessing. People must know Jesus. People must know that Jesus Christ is Lord, and besides him there is no other. People must know that no other name has been given unto men by which he might be saved. Accept the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Bazalane, I'd like us to pray for ourselves. We've all made these mistakes. Hallelujah. People in your immediate environment, they don't get your salvation. But let us pray, Bazalane, this morning. Father, have mercy on me. You promised us power to be witnesses. This power will cover every aspect. It will cover competence. It will cover the ability to speak. Yeah. Jesus says, my father tells me what to say yeah. and how to say it. Yeah. It will cover everything. Yeah. Yeah. This power. Yeah. So we don't need to do it in our own strength and our own ability. Yeah. That is why the, it, this song was in my heart. Uti. It's time to see Benek Jesu. Come from the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Bazalwane, this morning I'd like us to pray that, Father, in this season where you want people want to come to, come to the knowledge of the Lord, where you want, where souls, it's due time 
The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. We are due for a great harvest. Make us faithful witnesses. Help us to start before we can end up in stadiums. Help us to start with our street, our neighbors, our cousins, our work environment. Help us start where you are. God is not asking you to go buy a tent and pitch up a great tent revival. Start where you are. At the mall, how God do when a guy is trying how see how see how good do we have no chase? Not as a deterrent, it's a soul. It's a soul. So start. You know, footy getting a bad we have an advantage. It's easy to strike up a conversation. Yeah. That mama that you just happened to be sitting next to, how ma o Jesus, do you know Jesus? Yeah. That colleague, yeah. Jesus is Lord. Yeah. He saves. So as alone, let us just pray for ourselves. I request that we stand and we just pray. We have been promised power to be witnesses. We have been promised power to be witnesses. First in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, then to the ends of the world. We have received power. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory. We thank you, Father, for saving us. Thank you, Lord, for the grace you've given us that you opened our eyes to know that Jesus is Lord. Father, we want to follow through you with your word and be your faithful witnesses. Heavenly Father, in this season of God, of evangelizing the lost, Heavenly Father, give us power. Give us power, my Father. Give us power to be witnesses. Give us power to live right so that we are unashamed to tell people that Jesus is Lord. Distinguish us, Father, with your presence. Father, we ask that you forgive us. Father, where we've dropped the ball, where we've missed the mark, and have kulukuluami brought the gospel into disrepute. Forgive us, O oh Father. Restore us, O oh God. Help us once more, O oh Father, to walk before you faithfully so that we may be your powerful witnesses. Get Gamalika Jesus Christ to. Father, we depend on you. We submit ourselves to you. We need your power, Jesus. We need your power, Lord. We need your power, Guru Guru. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. For the power to witness. For the power to tell others about Jesus. This is the season of the month. Beloved, I do believe that this is a message that is really pointing us to repentance. Yeah. If you think about it, maybe those of us who have verses even on your door poster, those of us who have put verses on your walls, in your bedroom, have you noticed that most of the things that we put up on our walls have to do with promises? Mm. Yeah. But very less to do with assignments because we are very promise focused more than assignment focused and I do believe that this is a point of repentance for us maybe as Skulin was sharing it's just coming to hand that maybe one of the reasons why they are delaying in promises being fulfilled is because we have lost focus of our assignments and Father, we repent before you. It's always been about us and what we can get out of you. More than pursuing your will and your purpose for our lives. And we want to repent of our selfishness. And we repent of our self-centeredness. Even when we entice people to join our churches, it's all about what they can get out of you. More than pursuing their God-given assignment. And I pray, Father, that there be a paradigm shift in our thinking. In Jesus' mighty name, help us, O God, to understand that we are all called. We are all given an assignment. 
each and every one of us carries a mandate as our school leader has shared. And I pray, oh God, that we may go back to those mandates in Jesus' mighty name. And I do believe that those mandates, as we fulfill them, that is part of seeking first your kingdom and your righteousness. Help us, Father, not to seek things that you are wanting to add at the expense of seeking first your kingdom and your righteousness. Spirit spoke about coming with you in 